Oh, hey, what's going on, people? So inside this box, I've got the last piece to a little project I've been working on. But let me tell you, it has been quite the process. So as my home studio has evolved, and I've invested in new gear, what was once completely functional has kind of turned completely <laughs> So I decided that it was time to make better use of my space, starting with probably the most important piece to the workflow, the desk. I started searching through the internet trying to find a solution to pretty much two problems. One problem being I needed to find a solution for my outboard gear. I don't have the space in my studio for the large outboard rack that sits under my desk. It's been fine up until now, but it would be nice to be able to sit at a desk and put my legs underneath it. My second issue was that I needed something just a little bit taller, a little more ergonomic. I didn't want to be hunched over for several hours a day working at my desk. To make a really long story short, I spent about a month looking at everything from music production desks to Ikea desks to Ikea hack desks, is that, is that right? Anyway, I could not find something that suited my needs and fit my space and fit my budget. And I feel like that shouldn't be too much to ask. So I started playing around with the idea of building my own desk. And to be honest with you, it kind of started out as a pipe dream. I really didn't think I was gonna go through with it. I just said, hmm, what would my perfect desk look like? So with a little bit of Pinterest inspiration and some thorough measurements, I had designed this perfect desk. Not only did I discover that I could build something that would perfectly fit my needs, but it was gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper than it would be to just go out and buy something. A little disclaimer, I had never done anything like this before, so I made sure to consult with a professional, i.e. my stepfather, who is a construction contractor. He went over my measurements with me, told me that it would work. It is so important to make sure that you are not going to screw yourself royally. So that's what I did. Never be ashamed to ask for help. My stepfather was generous enough to help me put the top of the desk together, and thank God for that, because I definitely would have screwed something up. We put the desk top together using entirely oak plywood and then some one and a half inch oak pieces for the trim. The desk did look pretty cool, natural and unfinished, but I did decide to go with a light stain and a poly finish. As I'm sure you could tell, this process took about two days and I was very high off fumes because I did this in my apartment. I don't know if that's being resourceful or just really, really dumb. But anyway, next I went down to a local hardware store in my neighborhood, got some three quarter inch black plumbing pipe cut. The frame is pretty simple. It's just four legs on each corner of the desk with a support bar running across the sides and the back of the desk. I fasten the legs to the desk using pipe flanges, and I also use pipe flanges for the feet as well. But enough chatting, let's go back to my studio and check out this new desk. Voila! Guys, I'm so pleased to finally be able to show this to you. My brand new studio desk. I could not be happier with how this project turned out, and I gotta be honest, there were some times where I did not think this was ever gonna come together. So let's get right into it. Let me give you a full rundown of the entire setup. The final dimensions of the desk are 63 and a quarter inches wide, 33 inches tall, and 23 and a half inches deep. The bays on either side of the desk are 17 and 3 quarters of an inch wide by 6 and a quarter inches tall. These bays, as you can see here, will be able to hold two to three pieces of outboard gear. This bay to the right of the desk is full, but there is just a little bit of space at the bottom, and I left that at the bottom just so I could have a little bit of ventilation and a little bit of storage space. I can run an XLR cable through the bottom here that feeds out the front, which is really convenient when I'm recording vocals. I can also store things like my iPad or my iPhone if I want them readily accessible, but still out of sight, keeping the top of the desk looking nice and clean. This bay over here on the left side of the desk is not yet full. So I'm using the available space as a place to house my external hard drives and a USB hub. Again, this is a great way to keep the top of the desk nice and clean, nice and minimal, and it also definitely helps with cable management. And speaking of cable management, 
There's a nice long board on the back of this desk that I was able to fasten a cable raceway to. I bought this on Amazon really cheap. I'll link that in the description. But most of my cables are running through this raceway, tucked away nicely out of sight. Initially, I had also planned to fasten the power strip to the back of the desk, but it would have required me to pull my desk out farther from the wall than I want. So I simply fastened the power strip to the bottom of the desk. And as you can see, I'm able to run any necessary cables along the legs of the desk fastened with this. Velcro cable ties. Do not sleep on the Velcro. I've been using these for cable management for years and maybe it doesn't look as perfectly clean as it could, but it's certainly no rat's nest of cables either. For me, the most important thing is keeping all of my cables off the floor and as many cables tucked away out of sight as possible. In the past, when I've had tons of cables on the floor, dust accumulates, it gets really dirty down there, and it's not easy to clean up and keep your space neat and tidy. So do yourself a favor, invest in some Velcro cable ties, it's gonna make your life so much easier, I promise you. Now let's get into some of the fun stuff. I try to keep the top of the desk as clean and neat as possible. First, I have my MacBook Pro sitting on this aluminum stand from Satoshi. I just really like this one because it's small and compact. It takes up hardly any space on the laptop and you can hide some cables underneath it to keep the desk looking as clean as possible. I still use the Gen 1 Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad from Apple. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I have this nice desk lamp from Aki. Aki? Is that how you say it? Aki? Ow, ow key. Ow. I hope it's Aki. It's cool, it has adjustable brightness for your white light. You can also set it to any color you want, and it also has a color cycle mode as well. My desk and monitor are backlit with the Flex LED strips from Ting Cam. Ting? Ting Cam? I don't know. I'll link it in the description below. But what I will say is these LED kits are great. I tried a few different types of LED strips before settling on this one. And why I like this kit so much is because in addition to all of the presets that they give you, you can dial in custom colors and save them as presets. Now for me, a side note, I'm somebody who really cares about white light temperature. Anybody who shoots video, you know what I'm talking about. Both of the lamps and the overhead light in my studio are hooked up with the Philips Hue white ambiance kit. It allows you to dial in the perfect temperature of white light for your preference, which I really like. That being said, if I've got all of the white lights in the studio set to a specific temperature, but the LEDs are set to a completely different temperature, it's gonna look terrible, especially when shooting video. Guys, look, for most of you, this probably is complete overkill, and I probably seem like a little bit of a psychopath right now. I get it. But if you're like me, and dialing in that perfect white light into your LED strips is important to you, get this kit. I will link it in the description below. You will be totally happy with it. I did have to buy an additional receiver so that I could run the desk lights independently from the monitor lights, but it's totally worth it. It's inexpensive, and you can control both lights with the same remote. I keep the remote hidden under my desk. On the back, I have a little piece of Velcro. It just goes under the desk like that. I also have this aluminum hook mounted down here to hang my headphones. I've got the old tried and true KRK Rocket 8s sitting on acoustic isolation pads from Oralex. My Apogee Duet is sitting over here on the far side of the desk. Still trying to figure out if there's a better place for this. I might mount this somewhere, but for right now, this is where I'm keeping it. Last, but certainly not least, We've got the Fat Man standing nice and tall. After all, he is the most badass Star Wars character, right? All right, guys, that's gonna wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed this. Most of all, I hope that this showed you that these DIY projects aren't as impossible as they seem. Believe me, if I can do something like this, you can too. If you have any questions about this project or even a project that you're working on, Feel free to leave them in the comments below. I am by no means a carpentry expert, builder guy, but I'm certainly willing to help any way that I can. Thanks so much for sticking around and for liking and commenting and subscribing. Your support means a lot to this new and growing channel. Until next time, my name is Patrick and I'll see you guys soon, all right? Peace. Ting cam. Ting, ting cam? Ting cam. Ting, ting, ting cam. Ting cam. I don't know. Tink, 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 tink.